Hey everybody, welcome back. David Eon and the lovely Miss Lady Pop Hunter here with some action figure news. Some actual action figure news. I know we do the weekly roundup and we call it action figure news and really we just talk about upcoming action figures. But this is actual news from the action figure community because it involves Hasbro through their subsidiary or they own Wizards of the Coast, which has like role playing card games. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this guy, Cannon, he got his early. And it was like two weeks early. And their response to it was to send Pinkerton detectives to his house to harass him and take his cards back and threaten him. And this is just really interesting the way that this goes because Hasbro and Hasbro Pulse, of course, we're talking Hasbro here because they own Wizards of the Coast. Taking a look at what they have to say, and I'll just pull this up here really quick, and this is Hasbro Pulse, is a place where fans come first. Mm -hmm. As fans ourselves, I highly doubt that. I All of these toy companies, I've talked about this many times, Mezco, NECA, everybody claims this. All right, but they're in business to make money. So even if one or two of them are collectors, there's a lot of people on the board that are making decisions that could care less. I promise you. As fans ourselves, we have an idea of what you, our fans, want. Hasbro Pulse is where you'll find some of the best product offerings and experiences from the brands you love. A glimpse at more behind the scenes material and insider details that you can't get anywhere else. We made Hasbro Pulse with you, the fans in mind. We'll hope you make it your first stop when you're looking for insider info about your favorite Hasbro brands. Blah, 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 Hasbro, where fans come first. Unless you get a package early and it's our fault because <laughs> it's, you know, it's not like he did something. He was accused of stealing. When the, when the Pinkertons showed up at his door, they said he had stolen property. They mailed it to him. And he by the way, paid for it. Yeah, he, he paid bought for and it. paid for it. And by the way, we're not talking about a pack of cards. This guy paid four thousand dollars for these cards. Oh my god! Yeah, it was four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. Oh wow! I didn't know it was like that. The, I thought it was a pack of cards you get at Walmart. No, it wasn't a pack of cards. Oh. And it was their mistake. It was their mistake. And instead of you know, and this has happened before with other companies. Instead of sitting there and saying. Oh, well, and I forget who it was. There was another company this happened with just recently where they were like, hey, it looks like, and they even said on their social media because this person did an unboxing. Mm -hmm. Looks like you got it early by accident, but hey, what are you going to do? Thanks for the review. And that was kind of their attitude. Mm -hmm. But no, this guy, these hire, these guys hired the Pinkertons. So who are the Pinkertons? Because they've been around for about 175 years. Yeah, you hear about them a lot if yeah. you watch... Um like old, old Westerns. western yeah. shows they were the guys that rode on the trains to keep the trains from getting robbed yeah they were uh, railroad detectives and union busters they're known for that as well they're the guys that like if there was a picket line back in like 1890 or 1910 they would go down to the docks and give a thousand guys five bucks in a club to come and bust up the picket line hmm they have a reputation for that. And who are the Pinkertons? Well, let's read their statement. It says, We are the world's leaders in comprehensive risk management, providing risk advisory, security management, and protective services to global organizations. And that doesn't sound like a detective agency to me. It sounds like contractors. <laughs> it sounds like mercenaries. It sounds like that guy at Afghanistan that they say, let him on the base, but don't talk to him. <laughs> That's who that sounds like. Sound like spooks. I didn't know they were still around. Yeah, I thought well, they were long gone. I mean, you no, know, a died out breed. Well, they started in Chicago. And that's everything you need to know right there. Yeah. But uh, I think a Chicago attorney started them, if I'm not mistaken. But so what happened? And if you want a really comprehensive uh, breakdown on this, Gizmodo, G I Z M O D O has a really detailed article about this. It says, uh, you know, Magic Raid wasn't the first time. And this is an important thing to understand that Hasbro and uh, Wizards of the Coast have used the Pinkertons several times. Uh, the earliest available information of which is way back in 2017. And I think it had something to do with a card sheet that was stolen. Mm. Yeah, well, that was legitimately stolen. But they were going around and um, harassing people about that then. So 
this guy and it gets gets his package, gets excited, opens it up, does a couple of videos. Um, Wizards of the Coast claims they tried to contact him, according to Canon. Uh, he says that he got a couple of um, like unlisted phone calls mm -hmm. and ignored them because that's what you do. Yeah. You don't answer it when it says unknown, right, <laughs> or unlisted. You ignore it, and there, there were no messages, and he assumes that must have been them if they did call him. They said they sent an agent. Anne is one. Yeah, but according to him and according to neighbors, it was a group of men, and uh, that they basically busted their way in. The, the wife answered the door, and she went. She was like, well, let me go get my husband, and went to close the door, and they wouldn't let her. They forced it open. It's like the mafia coming yeah. to your house to break your legs because you didn't pay your gambling bill. Your gambling debts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you said it's $4,000 worth of cards, but I mean, okay, yeah, yeah he paid $4,000 for the cards. How much did Hasbro pay for the Pinkertons to go out and do that? Yeah, that ain't cheap. When you're talking about these kind of contractors, how much do you think that costs? Each of them is probably getting 4000 a day. <laughs> to go around and do this and it's already revealed the argument was that because I guess he had so many that um, 75 percent or roughly 75 percent of the boosters from the limited set were mm. revealed in the videos but if he bought, spent four thousand dollars yeah he probably has all of them um, and it's already revealed what do you want to do uh, or, or if they were that concerned about it and they couldn't get a hold of him I'm sure if they had went to YouTube they could have put a temporary hold on his yeah, they could have. They could have um, yeah. took the video down like they do everybody else's yeah, video. They'll they'll block you in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So and um, you know, uh, Cannon says just looking at the article a little bit, and again, that's on Gizmodo dot com, and they they've got a really detailed article on it that um that the uh, I'm very familiar with the Pinkertons reputation they said they were there to recover stolen goods after his wife asked them to wait outside can say they forced themselves partially through the door and prevented her from closing the door all the way so on and so forth they threatened him they told him that he they were going to contact law enforcement where is it uh, they claimed copyright infringement <laughs> and said I would face between one and ten years in jail they threatened that the incident would result in up to two thousand and five two hundred thousand in fines wow. and, all, and all legal fees I don't know how it's copyright infringement because and you know the the, the rule with the post office also or delivery in general mm -hmm. is once it's in your hands it's yours if it's been delivered to your home that's it yeah you know unless you misrepresented yourself somehow like I went through that with my Mezco package mm -hmm. that person signed my name to the package and took it and that's why the police were able to get involved because mm -hmm. he misrepresented himself and he basically stole the package this guy didn't he paid for it he received it it was his so there was no misrepresentation nothing was stolen and there's no copyright infringement as far as I can tell but again this is not the first time this happened and it goes deeper than that he says because uh, you know friends and neighbors are chiming in on it and it says um, April 25th the Pinkerton agents after attempting to go to Cannon's house began uh, door knocking they were going door to door through wow. the neighborhood and talking to his neighbors asking for information about him <laughs> wow that's that's uh that's a step beyond here and wow. we're at a point now where people are already kind of frustrated with Hasbro you know they're frustrated with Hasbro because no they don't seem like they listen to their fans they have their nice little disclosure where they talk about where fans come first hey we're fans too we know what you want hey we love you guys it, it makes me think of uh, idiocracy mm -hmm. and the guy at the costco uh, you know they had the door greeter at costco and he just stands there like half in a st sedated state and as everybody walks past him he goes welcome to costco i love you welcome to costco i love you because <laughs> that fake greeting and they do they are instructed to be phony the the people that work in these places but this is really phony too especially if they're going to have these kind of draconian measures for their error they made the mistake but they said they'll compensate him what give him some more cards i guess they're going to return his cards when it's time 
Like, <laughs> are he gonna? Is he gonna get brand new cars or the same ones that's probably all <clears throat> bent up and balled up? I don't know, because um, it, it, here it says like Canon says he is a hobbyist, not a full time or even part time content creator or influencer. And until the weekend, he had less than four thousand followers on his YouTube channel. Sending uh, bullish private investigators to Cannon's house in order to retrieve product would be a massive overreach to a problem that is typically solved with a letter from a lawyer. Additionally, there may, may have been no need to ask for the physical cards back. Wizards of the Coast could have tracked the origin of, pro of the product using the foil wrappers that the cards came in or the cardboard boxes, both of which have means for tracking and distribution printed on their services. On their surfaces, sorry. And exactly, mm -hmm. that, that could have very easily been solved, uh, but they they wanted to be heavy-handed about it. But what does that prove? I mean, what point did they get across? The, <laughs> don't mess with Hasbro. <laughs> don't mess with me. You don't know what you're in for. But fans come first. Oh, okay. Oh, we we love you. We love you. Until you post a YouTube Until video. Until you post a YouTube video, then you'll, then they want to hem you up. <laughs> then it gets to, then it gets serious. It's on. <laughs> but th this is uh this is ridiculous. Actually, I can't believe that. Cause when I first heard the story, <laughs> I thought it was like I thought it was fake. Because yeah. I was like, there's no way. I mean, you know, whatever. That sounds stupid. It sounds like somebody's just making it up for publicity. And, um, you know, YouTube clicks and views and stuff like that. Because people do that kind of stuff. But then the article started coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe this did happen. And we've seen a couple of the videos. And I don't think they realize how, you know... Maybe it's what they were jumping on it soon, too yeah. soon, but that they don't realize that, no, we're not talking about a couple of packs of cards, and that uh, Hasbro and and Wizards of the Coast have a history of that. And um, they point out in this article, at the end of the article also, that there are other connections between Wizards of the Coast and Pinkerton. Uh, it says uh, Robert uh, Klimek, who's the director of security and risk management for Hasbro Incorporated uh, and has been working for Hasbro for 12 years was previously the director of supply chain security practices for Pinkerton. <laughs> so the head of security at Hasbro is a former Pinkerton executive. So no kidding. <laughs> and a little bit of nepotism there that of course the director of uh, <laughs> the director of risk management for Hasbro uh, contracts Pinkertons to do their to do their dirty work but I mean who who, who I know. thought that was a good idea because you don't just <laughs> say I mean somebody perusing through YouTube yeah Hasbro mm -hmm. looking through YouTube and which found means this video. that they have people that look at this stuff yeah and yeah. then you know they were like oh my god somebody got the um the cars too soon let me take this to higher up and get me higher, the red phone <laughs> and then higher ups has a meeting and says what do we do about this i know somebody said leave it alone <laughs> yeah. somebody else said well let's just contact youtube have the video pull we or, has bro we have worst that case scenario we contact a, a, an attorney to act as an agent they in that area. They don't have to contact an attorney. They have attorneys. All major companies yeah, have attorneys. Yeah, I know, attorneys. but I mean, they must have a, a, a satellite in that area. They must right. have somebody. But I'm saying, who thought it was a good idea? Who came up with the idea? No, let's scratch all that. We're going to nip this in the bud. Let's call the Pinkertons. We need to send a message. Yeah. <laughs> we got to set a precedence. <laughs> Who raised their hand and said, yeah, I agree, yeah. I, all in favor, I. Uh, I know. How many hands went up? <laughs> you, know? uh -huh. I mean, you got a meeting of 10 people. Yeah. It had to be six people. We can't allow this to that, happen. That raised their hand and said, I'm all in. I mean, people are already frustrated with Hasbro because of delays, because of their packaging changes, which they said they're reverting back now. But nobody wanted that in the first place, and it took them, what, what a year and a half to get the message. Um, 
another nail in the coffin because I'm seeing, and, you know, people just run their mouths. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're telling the truth or not, but there's a lot of people that are sitting there saying, you know what, I'm just really kind of done at this point with Hasbro because I don't like them as a company anymore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them might not go back and buy their Legends anymore or their Black Series figures anymore or their uh, Wizards of the Coast cards. Don't they or, do G.I. Joe? Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 Joe too. I saw a video recently, and the person is was going on oh, about yeah, how quality control. Yeah, the quality control, and <clears throat> with the GI Joe classifieds, and how they got it, and the arm broke off. Yeah. And then he showed clips of other people. previous one or his. They were his previous videos. No, he showed other YouTubers. Oh, oh, with that, the same problem. With the same problem. So he was like, "Look, I'm not. It's not just me." Yeah. Every, you know, a lot of people are having this problem. But he also showed a clip of himself with the previous one. Yeah. Because every, just about every female figure he's gotten, the arm has snapped the, off yeah. during, during his unboxing and review. And he, he was like, he's he's stopping. He yeah. Because he loves the... I can't the, do um, it anymore. He yeah. loves the, the classifieds. classified, but why spend $25 yeah. or however much it costs just to have it break? Yeah, damn near 30 bucks with tax at this point. And yeah, too. Poor quality control, uh, undesirable packaging, ignoring your fans, and now they've got the uh, the Brood Squad <laughs> coming around. I think and, a mafia and, dude. And threatening I mean, you. Like ooh. two weeks. <clears throat> it, it was just a, doing shakedowns. They shipped it two weeks early, and that's their own logistics problem. That's a mistake they made at their warehouse that they could have figured out. Mm -hmm. And so what if people saw the cards early? Does it that change anything? Them, it might make some more people yeah. want to buy the car. They might be more excited about it. Yeah. You know? Unless you just produced garbage and, and you're like, you you know that people will be disappointed when they see the cards and not want them. <laughs> that's a possibility. Wow, that's, that's overreach. It, it really is. <laughs> for what is probably the largest uh, toy company globally because they keep absorbing other properties and buying out other uh, other companies and becoming large and this is what you get when you have uh, a company becoming a corporation when they start sucking up all these other entities and they feel like they can just do whatever the hell they want you see it w across the board with all sorts of manufacturing like if you go in the supermarket just as an example and you have like 80,000 products on the shelf in your average supermarket probably different products probably damn near 90 percent of them are the same uh, five to seven companies all under the under one umbrella hmm. i know that because i used to work for uh, frito-lay which is a division of pepsico which is young foods international and they've got like a hundred freaking brands you know half the stuff you buy in the store comes from pepsico yeah. you know it, it's it's insane they don't just make soda they make a ton of stuff because they buy out these little little companies and little properties and they merge them together and that's what Hasbro's doing and when you become a a corporation instead of a company you lose sight of your customers and you don't think of them as customers anymore you think of them as just consumers just hogs eating slop consumers. and how are they going to bounce back from this i mean <laughs> cuz you know it's sometimes a company would do something yeah and it's like, what were you thinking? But they're able to bounce back. <laughs> you need Are they able to bounce back? By actually collaborating with their actual customers instead of thinking for them, work with them. Basically, they'd have to, they have to go back to scratch. They have to go back to basics, back to the early days of, and I've used this as an example with Hasbro before with G.I. Joe and where the swivel arm battle grip came from. Mm -hmm. It was because the straight arm figures, when kids were working with them with the weapons, it was making their thumbs snap off because they couldn't turn the arms. They corrected that immediately. The first wave has two versions, straight arm and then swivel arm battle grip because they corrected it immediately to solve the, consumer pr the customer problem. Do you see Hasbro or any of these companies doing this now? No. No. Because <clears throat> you're consumers now. You're no longer customers. So where's the customer satisfaction? If we don't have customers, we don't have to worry about it. Pigs eat and slop. Consume. And unfortunately, many will. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they put up, they've been conditioned to put up with delays. 
poor quality control, bad sculpts, bad paint application, poor packaging, and garbage like this. <laughs> so it remains, it, it, but you never know. There's always that tipping point. There's always that tipping point. I want to see how they're going to bounce back. <laughs> we'll say, well, they are collaborating with uh, Mattel here. They're doing something. Yeah, they're doing some type of collaboration, I heard. Yeah. A little smoke and mirrors, a little redirection. Yeah, but will Mattel do it now after all this? <laughs> they're like, uh-uh. Hey, we don't want to be associated with you. Money is money. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, will you make money if people don't buy it because they don't <laughs> like you anymore? And you did one step know. too far. You that straw that broke that camel's back. Yeah, remains to be seen. But you know, hey guys, we'll throw it out there. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on this? Did you heard? Have you heard about it? Do you know all the details? You just picking up snippets here and there. Like uh, like I said again, uh, Gizmodo has a really good article on it, and it's uh, with regular updates. They've had a, a few updates already to correct the article as more information has come in. Uh, let us know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. We hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. And if that's it, then what more can we say? But thanks for watching, and we will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.